Okay, we are live, and um, I know nobody's watching now, but uh, hopefully in playback, some people will be watching. Um, we are in Alamo Gordo right now. I'm at the His Space History Museum Outdoor Static Display. It's uh, a lot of real artifacts here, a lot of real rockets that were used and flown part of our U.S. space program, and we're about to walk through it. The main building is right over here. And I toured that yesterday. They're not too big of fans of uh, live streaming inside the museum. So we're gonna walk around the outdoor static display. It is about 10.30 in the morning, I believe, local time. Beautiful, it's 50 degrees, but uh, in the dry air, it's actually quite comfortable with just a long sleeve t-shirt. This, of course, is a testing drone, I think, or a and of course that is a part of the Apollo program I've been here before but I haven't read all the displays so some of this discovery is going to be well we're going to be doing it at the same time and hopefully some of you are old enough to know what this is this is a V2 the business end of the V2 white sands was a spot where, after World War II, they brought some V2s over here, and this is where they tested them. This is also where Werner von Braun and others came to uh, help develop the U.S. space program. As you can see, the vengeance weapon, of course, is what the V2 stands for. And uh, it's 46 feet long. It was the first ballistic missile and the first one to go up into space. We're talking about all the Elon Musk of the world going up there, but these guys did it first in the 1940s. Okay, now let's walk up. This one, I believe, was used to test the escape pod at, uh, at the top thing, there the top little rocket would uh, attach, it's attached to the capsule, and if there was a problem with the rest of the rocket, that one would fire off, in the astro allowing the astronauts to escape in the capsule. Have to go read about what that one's about. And if you see the little white line in the distance, that is white sands. Uh, I was at White Sands National Park yesterday. I tried to do a sunset shot, but um, in fact, I lost about 20 <laughs> subscribers because of that video. After about two minutes, I lost signal. So I um, couldn't do what I wanted to do there, but we'll try to do that again tomorrow. Well, okay, I'm losing subscribers here, but are losing... That is a Nike missile. It's something to, to shoot down ICBMs. This is, of course, a tracking device, I believe. No, oh, it's a ground meteorological device. It would track the balloons that were sent up to check on the weather. This, there, unfortunately, is not somebody over there, but these things, and I saw some people doing this yesterday, test. You can whisper, and they can hear it at the other end. Good old perfect parabola. One of my science fairs in eighth grade, we actually made one of those things using um, saucers that you would uh, sled down on in the snow. I think at White Sands, they even rent them to you to slide down the white sand. Yep. This is a Nike missile. It was designed to uh, protect us against uh, Russian missiles coming towards us. When I grew up, there was a Nike base <laughs> not far from my house. This is one of my favorite things here. This is an F-1 rocket engine. This powered 
the Saturn V. Five of these were used to send men to the moon. Hello? Did I lose everything? What happened? Okay, don't know how that happened. But what's really interesting about this is it looks like it's in really good shape. And I was here like 10 years ago looking at this thing. You know, those guys knew how to make things back in the day. The business end of a Saturn V rocket. These are the big massive pumps on the top that pumped in the fuel and the oxidizer. Sorry about the sun flare. how this is actually feels very solid obviously <laughs> and the big trick here was all those little holes called baffles helped control the mix fuel mixture I've read a couple of books on how they designed these things and that was apparently one of the hardest parts was getting the the fuel to mix without exploding. And this is, of course, a housing. Well, I'm not whipping this thing around too fast, but um, these other missiles are, well, the one in the foreground there, the double stager, that's an Aerobi 150. And I had a, an Estes rocket one of those toys that you had when you were kids. Put two C-65s and a C-60 and a C-65 in this thing, and boy, it would go thousands of feet up in the air. By the way, in a minute, we're going to go look at a uh, space cap Mercury space capsule. There's one up there on the, on, on the hill. By the way, I'm also in, the reason I'm in Elmo Gordo is to shooting another one of my hopefully epic travel guides. This one's of the seven parks of the Rio Grande Rift. And it goes from here, White Sands, and we're gonna go up to roughly the Colorado border. Well, the rift goes up a little bit farther than that. It goes a little bit farther south too, but we're mainly gonna be talking about the parks there. We're gonna go look at some old ruins from Native Americans are a thousand years old. We're going to look at a caldera that's about 14 miles in diameter. And, uh, of course, White Sands, Guadalupe National Park, Carlsbad Caverns, which I went to the other day. And there is a about a 15-minute video on the park. It tours the cave. Not a lot of narration in that one, but uh, just walking around the cave. It's on the channel. The West is big, of course. And I don't see any comments. Actually, maybe because I don't know how to see the comments. Apparently nobody's commenting. Okay. I'm new at this doing live. Lost signal again. Sorry about that, don't know how that happened, but it keeps on happening. This is the intercept ground recording station. Now we're gonna go look at the big boy, and then we're gonna go look at a mercury capsule. big and of course the whole Saturn V was 363 feet tall. This thing is nowhere near that. This thing is called Little Joe. 
solid, solid fuel little Joe was used to test the launch escape system. Wow. It's much more impressive when you're standing right next to it. And you can see it's interestingly made. Notice they're triangles and not airfoil shaped. And uh, the X-15 program showed that that was actually a better way of doing things for these kinds of speeds. Okay, this is the parachute test vehicles. What this thing is, it was used on the sled. Mach 1.2, this thing could do. Well, that was one of the feet of the crawler for the space shuttle. The track, basically, on the Caterpillar. see a sign of whatever that is. Obviously, it's some sort of a re-entry test vehicle. Okay, now let's go look. Sorry about the quick whipping around. This is a Mercury capsule. Apparently, it was used for Testing out things, seeing where the buttons were, seeing how they would fit, see how a man could fit in it. See, it's got the little stuff on the back. So they could see where all the switches were. A bit of a simulator. And of course, there's the window that they insisted upon. If you remember that from any of the movies. Kind of interesting, a real mercury built. Now we're going to go around the corner, and this is an egress test for the 117A. This is the real deal, the real thing that they used to practice getting in and out of the stealth fighter, the Nighthawk. And that's the way in. Obviously, I'm gonna lose signal if I go in there, but um, I was in there yesterday. There was a whole floor dedicated to Star Trek and Gene Roddenberry, who actually was a pilot in World War II and actually saved some people, rescued them from various plates. Um, and one more engine, by the way, on its cradle. Probably my favorite thing, there was a uh, a little jetpack that remember the space shuttle guys would fly around space. There's a little game simulator thing up there that you can play with. And there's also real space suits from the various programs, and also real moon rocks, which is pretty cool. Okay, well, I'm hoping somebody enjoys this, and if you do, please subscribe to the channel. Um, and if you don't, <laughs> Well, then I'll probably stop doing these, but um, they might be useful. Not too many people would be able to come out here. I thought I'd give you the opportunity to see a pretty cool little spot. And uh, it's on the University of New Mexico campus in Alamo Gordo, high up on the hill, above White Sands in Holloman, Holloman Air Force Base. And according to Google Maps, there's also a spaceport there. And why I'm here again is because of the Rio Grande Rift. I'm gonna talk about that really quickly. 
But this is the edge of the Rio Grande Rift. It, the, people may not know that, well, the, the Earth isn't static. It's always changing. And they've had GPS on either side of the Rio Grande River. And what they found was that the Earth is pulling itself apart. And geologists have done a little bit of work and found that it's been doing that for about 30 million years, give or take. And um, it's created these mountains. It's pushed these up and filled in this little valley over time. And the video I'm working on is going to be, we're going to cover the seven parks in the Rio Grande Rift. We're going to talk a little bit about the geology, the people who lived here. We're going to go to a petroglyph site that's 40 minutes up the road that has 20,000 petroglyphs. It's one of my favorite places. It's only three miles off the road, but I think it's out of cell coverage range. If it isn't, I will do a live stream from there. It's a very, very cool place. One of my favorite places. Been there many, many times. And there isn't a video on my channel that it's unnarrated that I shot, I think, 10 years ago or more. But anyway, I hope you'll watch. And uh, hope you like it. And leave any comments if the audio is any good, if the rambling is stupid, if you just prefer to see it. I'm kind of new to this live streaming. This is only the third one I've done. And yesterday's only lasted two minutes because I lost cell phone coverage. And um, anyway, let me know what you think. Thanks again for watching. And tune into The West is Big, if you would. And subscribe to the channel. And you'll see lots of videos on Utah, Montana, New Mexico. Lots of places to explore. Because after all, the West is big. Thanks again. How do I get out of it?